Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Happy last Saturday of, I think it's the last, we're well, getting to the last Saturday of September. We're really close to October 1st. My name is Maria. Welcome to Mosaic Maria. I'm in my kitchen. It's 1130 in the morning. And I thought today would be a good day to make a big pot of minestrone soup. So what I have in here is a micro cabbage that I got at Wegmans. They're these little tiny, they're so cute. They're, they used to be 99 cents, now they're $1.29, but they're worth it for a soup or something if you don't want to use up a lot of cabbage. So a micro cabbage, carrot, celery, onion, I had some leftover string beans, and I had some snow pea pods in the house. So I took my leftover snow pea pods, my cabbage, I had some leftover bella mushrooms, I chopped those up, cooked them up, and I have black beans and cannelli beans in here, and the heel of Regimio Parmesan. So cannelli beans are with the black bean right there. And a six ounce bag of baby spinach. I got a lot of vegetables and this is gonna be a really hearty minestrone. And over here, I found these really cute. I wish I could remember where the heck I found them. So when I shop, I go to um, I go to several different stores and comparison shop. So I used tops, reduced sodium, chicken broth, four cups, and then a little bit of water. I used tops, crushed tomatoes, tops, no salt diced tomatoes, a can of black bean low sodium, rinsed, and Wegmans cannelli beans. There's no rhyme or reason as to how I do. I thought I was in the Goya aisle, but maybe not. These may have come from the Dollar Tree or the Dollar General. Pagas. Oh, I gotta... No. This came from the Spanish aisle. They're teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny little shells. So they're about as big as, you know, when you want a short pasta in your soup, like dittolini or they're really, really teeny. They're not going to get any bigger than that. So I'm going to toss some of them in. And then I just put my cabbage in at the end. So I cook my mushrooms first. So they get nice and dark and they don't get rubbery, kind of spongy. Um, I had some frozen, those thin green beans. I should have chopped them down, but I will as I'm going. And just some baby carrots and some whole carrots and some Roma tomatoes that I threw in there. That is a big soup. And then I have a little heel of the Regimio Parmesan in there, and that's flavoring it. So for spices, I used a little thyme, about an eighth of a teaspoon of thyme. I used crushed black pepper, crushed hot pepper, only a pinch of salt because you really don't need it. I do have a garlic clove in there, minced up, and just one. And um, basil. And then I took what I had left over of my pesto and threw it in there. I had a little jar of artichoke hearts. I took a little bit of the juice from that artichoke heart, threw it in. I had a little jar of Goya. Uh, roasted red peppers. I took what I had left of that and some of the juice and that makes all the difference. All these little vegetables melding together is really helping. And uh, usually when I do sauce I do a little pinch of sugar or um, a little cinnamon or nutmeg. I don't even need to do that this time. It really has a, it's just turned out to be nice. So just the vegetables you choose. If I had zucchini, I probably would have thrown that in. You just cook your vegetables. And I put my spices in my vegetable while they're cooking before I add any liquid so that I don't overdo it. And once I get it smelling and looking like I want it to look, I then add my water, my chicken broth, my tomatoes. And then Getting towards the end, I add my beans, and then at the very end, I add my cabbage or my spinach or my arugula or escarole because that cooks down really fast. It shrinks. 
but I like the dark green with the light green with the white. I also have a green pepper in here, a Cubanelli green pepper, a little, I like an Italian sweet pepper. So it added a lot of, it added a lot of cool flavor to it. My pasta is almost done. I'm going to bring it to a bottle. Put the lid on it. And some of it will go in the soup. Not much. And the rest of it I'll see. So here's what I used. I showed you. All right. And the spices. I'm telling you, the lifesaver with this. Oh, time. I, I may have used some sage. Fresh out pepper. That's about it. Usually I put some cinnamon in and I'm not feeling like it needs it. I'll walk away for a minute so my pasta will come to a boil and then it'll be done. I'm done making all my sunflowers for my tree, which I showed y'all. I really think my purple ones came out better. But the yellow ones are sweet too. I wanted to keep it all pastel. I'm going to do a video soon to show how to make these roses. I keep saying I'm going to do it, but these are knitted. These are crocheted. Now I put the bigger ones up here so people could see it from outside. So my goal is done with making handmade decorations every season. <laughs> I'm still not sure what I'm going to do for Halloween. Still not sure. Maybe a lot of friendly ghosts. Casper. I don't know. Oh no. I don't want to put pumpkins on it because I don't want anything orange. Mm. I know for November I still will want some sunflowers on it. At night it looks really pretty when I turn the lights on it. And I do that for about an hour at night. That's it. Um, but the idea that I had that I don't know if I mentioned it, so I'll mention it again. Is if I had to do this again, I would make the doily garland like I did for the hearts, which I posted the pattern for, I would make the same doily garland for the sunflowers and the same doily garland for the roses. Just because those are things you're going to swap out autumn, summer, spring, you know, February-ish. I'm not doing handmade for Christmas. I am not. <laughs> but... It's just going to go full on Christmas. And I'm going to get that tree down until next Christmas. It was a good challenge. It was a good fun thing to do every season, month, few months. Yeah. That's how I like to see. So I already skimmed this. So I'll tell you, when you bring it to a boil, this is what's cracking me up is <laughs> this is on low. And it's going to come to a really big boil because this burner is a runaway burner. So my low simmer, you're not going to get simmer <laughs> with it. Um, but go ahead and skim the foam off with this part of here. So, all right, and the oil, you'll see it collecting on the side. And... I'll leave a little bit in because it's good flavor. Oh, the other thing I probably didn't tell you, but I did, is I had a couple slices of bacon left, so I rendered out the bacon um, juice with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And that just added flavor to the minestrone soup. I guess if you were going really... Um, hard nosed, big time vegetarian, you would just use vegetable broth and you wouldn't use the bacon. Um, I've seen some people use, uh, I've seen some people use uh, pancetta, spat. Even super sada or a little pepperoni if they had it, just to get the fat from it, because they want the flavor from it. 
I just think minestrone is so cool because it's just empty out everything you have and throw it in. If you got a potato, throw it in. If you got rice left over, throw it in. And serve it over everything. Who doesn't love a big bowl of vegetables, right? And it makes your house smell so good. Some people are like, oh, I put a little red wine in it. You could. I don't have any red wine. If I had it, I'd probably drink it. Because why not? And then I gain weight. So <laughs> no, I don't I don't really drink wine anymore. I used to, you know, when I got together with the family and stuff, we would have wine and then I would drink it. But I don't buy it to keep it in the house. Um white perfumey wine gives me a headache. Red, really, really red red wine sometimes gives me a headache, so eh. Once in a while. But I don't buy it to cook with. Even if a recipe calls for it. You know, some people are like, oh, I put a little burgundy in my minestrone. And I'll bet it's good. Um, I don't. I'll use a little red wine vinegar. I will say that. If you have a little balsamic vinegar in the house or red wine vinegar or even apple cider vinegar, throw a little bit in your minestrone soup. If you want to put a pinch of nutmeg in it, it's nice. Um, if you don't have nutmeg, if you want to put a pinch of cinnamon, if your sauce is getting really a little too bitter, you could put a little sugar in it, but I'm just going by memory of the way I've always seen minestrone done and done it. Traditionally, you use a savoya cabbage in minestrone and a garbanzo bean or a white bean. But I say, use what you got. I had some lentils. I was like, I'm not sure I'm going to throw them in. I don't want it to be too much fiber, too much vegetable. Well, so that's what I got. So today I'm looking through. Yeah, we're there. We're to the grateful season. <laughs> we're to the cooking full-on autumn grateful season. So collecting recipes and finishing up an afghan and cooking pretty soon i'll be putting these in containers and i'll bring some to my neighbor across the hall and my neighbor next door and i'll freeze the rest of it and my pasta is going to do dumbbell time i'm going to make a tuna salad out of that <laughs> i think i got some pineapples i want to use up and i think the pineapple and the tuna fish with red onion is going to be really good and that's it. That's all I'm doing today. All I'm doing is cooking in the kitchen. Cooking in the kitchen. Um, so I do want to come back and make a video, which what I talked about. I'm going to talk about grief, ambivalent grief, um, delayed grief, uh, all kinds of grief reactions. And anticipatory grief. I said that, I think. Um, what else? What else? What else? And making our stories truer when we tell our truths. Making sure we're not adding on from family folklore or innuendo or things we're just assuming because. Very important. And uh, our things we heard second, third hand that make us believe our story even more. I'm not telling us to doubt our story, I'm telling us to make sure it's very correct. As correct as memory can serve. Because otherwise, in this day and age, people are really fighting back and saying, no, you will not slander me. You will not cause pain and suffering to my character, my, my livelihood, my personal life. You will not do that. You will not cancel me. You will not do that because it causes undue suffering. So it's very important that when we tell our truths and speak our mind, that we speak it correctly. Okay, and that means being willing to take questions from the person you're accusing. You can't just make an accusation and then say, don't contact me. 
until you become the person I want you to be. Don't contact me. No. If you're if somebody really did something to you, you will be willing to face that person and say, You did this, and I need to talk to you about it. Right? And you will be willing to hear that person say, No, I didn't. No, I didn't. You're making it up and everything else. You will be willing to hear that. So before you go public with our truths, we need to be willing to say, does that truth stand up to questioning? Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. And have a nice day, everyone. Take care. Bye. Make some minestrone and good stuff and have a good autumn.